welcome to Pitch Brand Talk. I'm happy to have with me today Gunati Singh Sareen. He's the VP Marketing at Head Digital Works. Head Digital Works is one of the pioneers of online skill gaming in India, and its marquee brand is A23. Gunati, welcome to Pitch Brand Talk. Thank you so much, Simran. Uh, Gunati, I just want to start off first with your new campaign, which is really interestingly named called Personalization Campaign. And this is a word which all marketers are now using. So what is the objective of, our, of this campaign? Yeah, uh, I think the, the primary objective of this campaign is to kind of showcase our commitment, the brand 83's commitment to enhancing the user experience on our platform. Uh, broadly, you know, through through giving offers or promotions or, or you know, uh, any sort of communication that's more personalized for a user rather than spraying and praying. Uh, we do believe that, you know, such kind of uh, experience will actually enhance overall user experience uh, on the platform, right? Now, whether that's through through a very different homepage that's designed for the user. So your homepage on our app could look very different from my homepage because, because you know, you will only get to see what's relevant for you versus versus what's you know relevant for everyone right so that breaks the clutter for a user and he focuses on you know what's really important for him at that particular stage of his gameplay so it's not that you know the same offers will continue for him always depending on where he is maybe his balance is low maybe his win loss ratio is more etc so so based on that you know the offers the, the programs the communication will change for example if you have a pending withdrawal as well you will get to see that while obviously that section will be completely you know, empty or void, or in fact, not even there for me if I if I don't have. So it's very personalized in that sense. Uh, so that's that's the primary objective, of course. Uh, so create a lot more awareness of this, and we have also revamped our loyalty program. It's called the Ace Club now, wherein users will get to you know have a variety of benefits based on you know how much they play with us, uh, what have the deposits been like, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So kind of you know again personalizing a lot of uh, lot of experience for a user. And why it's important, I think, is is because it breaks the clutter uh, in the industry in the sector. While everyone talks about one one or this other thing, but but this one, I think, uh, as we see in the in the D two C industry as in digital industry, personalization is becoming more and more important. People love uh, a personalized experience, no matter which sector it is. I think that's that's one of the cues that we took and we said, you know, we will talk about this a lot more, and in fact, turned it into a campaign of sorts. So this is personalization at the individual level, right? Yeah, you can say that, right? You see, at the end of the day, the the, the endeavor is to kind of go to n is n is equal to one, but in for every user, everything could be completely different, right? So, so it's it's basically yeah, but it's as when I say personalization, it basically means at what stage of your gameplay uh, life cycle or stage, what is it that you could seek from 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 your platform, and we try and fulfill that by by telling him right there and then. Right. For example, uh, you know, as simple as that. Let's say there's a leaderboard of sorts, right? Uh, and you've not enrolled for the leaderboard, but you started a game that's just, that's there for the leaderboard. So on the game table, then we basically tell a user saying, "Hey, you 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 are actually playing a game that's that's there for the leaderboard. Why don't you go and register for it?" Instead of let's say sending a communication when he's not even playing, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So the community, so personalization comes in. You know, when do you want to talk about this? What do you want to talk about? And to who do you want to talk? About? Now, you know, uh, just take me through what are the key insights that you leveraged while deciding this campaign? Because you'll have a lot of data, backend data. So anything in particular that stood out for you? Yeah, in fact, uh, you, you you actually kind of answer that, you know, the biggest uh, thing that we look at is data today, right? Uh, we have a plethora of data on a platform, you know, of gameplay, et cetera, et cetera. What, and even the, even the promotions, the marketing promotions that we do with our customers. Uh, we try and learn a lot from you know how customers are responding to that, and when do they respond, etc. So I think the biggest insight is you know when we send out a communication to a user, let's say do this or do that or this is an offer for you, what are the take rates, what are what are the engagement rates, etc. Right, and then we figured out you know people are obviously not wanting this all the time, right? They may want it at at a different point in time, but not you know when we send it. So so, so the idea was to kind of you know be very very relevant, cut the clutter. Also, do not spam the customers with a lot of messages. Uh, send the messages only when it's important to a customer, uh, either for him to, you know, bring them back on the platform or to pick up an offer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, so I think the biggest insight was, you know, our own data. Uh, that's number one. Number two, like I said, um, 
you know, we've looked at other industries as well and how personalization is being picked up, you know, in several other industries uh, more and more, especially, you know, look at the delivery apps, for example, uh, Amazon itself, for example, right? So, you know, it's, there's a lot of cross learning from other industries that we that we looked at and said, it just makes a lot more sense to kind of, you know, personalize our own offerings and and, and communication to our users. And third, of course, some of the customer surveys and research that we that we're undertaking, wherein it came out that you know not all the offers are important all the time and stuff like that. And hence, you know, tell us when when we really uh, when we really really want it. And the fourth one was, you know, customers calling us up at different points in time and you know asking for a certain thing or an offer, yeah. but they don't do it every day, right? So they do it only when when let's say they 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 really probably need it, right? So so yeah, so that's that's those are the insights that we picked up. Um, what are you trying to achieve with this campaign? I mean, it could be user acquisition or, you know, again, keeping the uh, user happy, ROI. What is your end goal? Yeah, I think, like I said, uh, uh, you know, a greater brand reference to, because it kind of breaks that clutter. Uh, giving a narrative of customer experience, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in the industry, I think that's important. And I think it, that is going to help us, you know, get more traction. From a user acquisition perspective, as well as well as obviously, when we are personalizing this, this this ensures greater customer retention also, right? So, if I if I retain my customers well, if they if I serve them better, they are obviously going to be the greatest ambassadors uh, of our of our platform, right? So they will spread the word for the platform. So it's actually both. So you know we want to we want to basically build a lot of brand equity and preference through this campaign, and that's why we're doing uh, you know with a with an ad set right here. Uh, and two is is actually enhancing the user experience so that you know from from below the line perspective, customers actually talk about it a lot. You use the word personalization, user experience, improved user interface, mm -hmm. customer centricity. But it's easier said than done. What are the challenges, especially when in this when you know we've got seamless communication across all platforms? What are the challenges for that? Yeah, I think. Uh, I think you're right. So it's it's always easier said than done. We, we all love to use these buzzwords, but uh, I think uh, you know what has happened is basically I, I would say basically this is a combination of both uh, you know AI, ML, or technology, so to speak, and human intelligence put together, right? Uh, so we have a bunch of complex you know machine learning algorithms at the back end, who's basically looking at the customer gameplay patterns pretty much on a on a on a real time basis, right? Um, so whether it's win loss ratio, whether it's deposit amounts, whether it's you know last redeem, how many hours in a day somebody plays, days in a week, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think there are more than hundred such hundred such variables that the algorithm looks at. Yeah, I think so. This is this is the first part, which is I'm saying this is also not easy because it's important to understand which which variable kind of impacts what uh, uh, what behavior in a customer, right? Uh, but I think the second part is where you know you profile the users in different different cohorts. Meaningful cohorts and not like random big big uh, cohorts. So meaningful cohorts, that's number two. And third one is basically uh, you know looking at what do we do when we have this information. I think this is where the human intelligence kind kind of comes into play. The second and third part. How do we profile the users? Number one, and number two, basically how do, what do we do? What what are the tailor made solutions for these people? Right now, can we get it right in the first time? Of course, you know there'll be a lot of iteration. It's, it's an iterative process too. So yeah. So you kind of take months and months to kind of reach a point where you say, yes, yes, it has started to show some results at least. People are responding to, let's say, your communication a lot more versus earlier, right? So yeah, you're right. So the, the challenge is basically, you know, where, like, like, like I said, how do you read this data? How do you profile the user? And what kind of solutions you make for the user as well? Yeah. So, and, and picking up the right variables to kind of, you know, profile the users better. Now, I just want to also get to your brand ambassador, Shah Rukh Khan. You've had him, I believe, he came on board in 2022. So that's been quite a long, it's a quite a long association. So how has he helped build your brand experience and salience? Yeah, uh, so I think, uh, yeah, we, we started the first campaign in, in Feb 2022 with Shah Rukh Khan. Uh, the the experience has been has been really really good for the brand in terms of you know the overall salience going up, the awareness, preference, equity, everything has gone several notches higher. Uh, the kind of uh, you know we I think we've done more than five to six campaigns with him, 
every time we do let's say a particular campaign on gameplay we also do a campaign on on responsible gaming with him wherein he comes and talks about you know play responsibly while you're you know playing playing a uh, rummy or poker online right uh, which basically lends a lot of credibility uh, you know with his pan india appeal uh, with his overall you know uh, professionalism so to speak right and 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 he's a champion in his own field right so so it lends a lot of credibility and builds trust for the brand 83 uh, amongst the amongst the uh, target audience right uh, the brand is now much more known of course because we've run campaigns we we obviously uh, spend money on on those campaigns and with with his face uh, as part of the campaign as part of the brand uh, i may be yeah i may be wrong but i believe he's a gamer in his own right <laughs> i may be wrong about it but you know yeah. uh, you use the word that you know some consumers are uh, gaming 100 hours a week and you also said you mentioned responsible gaming with this so uh, with gaming being such a immersive experience how do you ensure responsible gaming you mentioned just now about sharukh khan you know talking about it but any other way yeah yeah so uh, in fact uh, i don't know if i said 100 hours or not but yeah people do play <laughs> yeah but uh, but so we have we have a you know bunch of things that we do for responsible gaming and you know we pretty uh, you know it's like a cornerstone of our marketing or a strategy as well as the business strategy right uh, first of all like i said we we do have ad campaigns or marketing campaigns on responsible gaming it's not just sharukh khan uh, talking about it in fact very recently last our last campaign on 83 cares as we call it responsible gaming uh, smriti mandana was was part of that uh, was was the face of that campaign and it was a stand alone campaign talking only about responsible gaming in okay. fact the, the tagline of the campaign was people who genuinely care for you will only tell you to kind of take a break right uh, okay. so there was no other campaign running alongside so this is the only campaign that we ran in fact we ran some very good innovation on on uh, some of the music apps as well uh, using this this campaign but in imagine we said you know there was a 20 second of silent spot uh in the music app you know when you're listening to music suddenly there's a break of 20 seconds you'll realize what happened right we'll try and figure out but there was a banner which says you know music ho ya gaming break lena zaruri hai and all that so it kind of was very very effective you know uh, sending out that message so that's number one i think you're very very uh you know uh, solid about let's say you know pushing this this narrative of cross uh through through our marketing campaigns number two the features on the app so we have features on the app where you can set daily and monthly cash limits number 2 you can also self exclude yourself uh, for number of days minimum is 3 goes up to many more days so you can basically say that i don't want to open this app and the app will not open then if you if you sign up for that it's it's a it's a feature in the app itself right so we have features in the app to help the users uh, to kind of you know put limits on their time as well as uh, cash limits Three is of course there's a test on the app which says you know test your responsible gaming patterns and all and then based on the test results we we kind of give some recommendations to the users and the fourth is is, is actually uh, is is last but not the least it's very very important is like I said personalization right so so we do you know uh, look at gameplay patterns of the users and if we see that you know somebody is 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 actually there's some erratic gameplay happening now this is where the personalization also comes in. we reach out to users very specific users we we tell them that you know maybe they can suspend the account right now if you know they're not playing the way they should play or they can reduce the cash limits right uh, or we can tell them you know uh, why don't you why don't you take a break yourself you know so so we reach out to the users either through telecalling uh, or through email etc or through or through, com- through communication as well right and and 90% of the users actually appreciate this they talk about you know you tell us you know how to play and then how to basically it's it's not like it's not preachy per se but we we give those suggestions to the user that this is what they can do and and like i said 9 90% of the times people uh, people are really appreciate our us yeah so these are the four things that we that we definitely and we continuously to going to work on on responsible gaming features to kind of make sure that as the industry grows you know this becomes uh, stronger and stronger as a narrative how would you define your tg and what is uh, and i want to also discuss the geographical spread have you seen good growth in the tier 2 or tier 3 tier 4 towns yeah uh, so our tg is basically you know we predominantly target males 22 hmm. to 50 nccs ab right uh, 
you know these could be graduates to to middle management or you know doing their own business etc so so predominantly this is the tg uh, now they can be found in any part of the country which is you know either the metros or the tier 1 or the tier 2 towns etc uh, what we've seen is good a uh, good percentage actually we see started to see good growth happening in from tier 2 to tier 3 uh but but largely from the same socio economic class that i was talking about it either has to be nccs a and b because in all our okay. campaigns we, we do not have uh, any other any other target segment right? and geographical spread uh, of course uh, like i said it has started to grow from from tier 2 and tier 3 towns as well uh, so are you looking at going below uh, in nccs a b or this is where you will stand how do you make the how you make it as look as yeah nccs ab predominantly that's where we want to go because like i said you know we also want to make sure that people play responsibly so that's okay. right easy that that we think it is and and while we deploy a lot of other marketing campaigns through the local influencers regional influencers we try to make sure you know that the the, the narrative of the of the campaign of the message still kind of appeals more to nccs ab and b only so the overall look feel relatability of the campaign uh, Is is keeping that easy in mind. Ah, uh, what is the media mix that you're using for this campaign? Is it going to be TV or uh, only digital focused? Yeah, so I I think you know for us, you know, uh, we want to make sure that our marketing spends are very very efficient now, right? Uh, we're focusing very strongly on profitable growth, I, uh, and for that, I think where wherever the customers are, that's where we're going going to be, right? uh i we truly believe that you know a lot of our most of our customers are found digital on digital platforms whether it's ott youtube social media uh maybe cable tv but yeah uh, but only specific programs there we we want to look at uh but the, for this campaign we're looking at the predominantly digital like i said youtube social media ott very specific program associations there and uh, a lot of uh, uh, lot of uh, uh, influencers that we've roped in for this right so so influencers uh, at a at a local and regional level as well yeah what we have to do is basically you know find a lot of innovative ways to reach to our consumer like i said profitable yeah. growth is the mantra for us and hence uh, you know trying to figure out how do we get more and more efficient by the day in reaching out to our consumers how much importance do you give to marquee sporting properties then is that a must for you to be on sporting properties So it's not beyond a must. cricket sorry beyond sorry. cricket also <laughs> yeah i think first of all yeah cricket is obviously like a religion in the country so uh, we have been associated with cricket in the way that we were present during the cricket tournaments uh, with our ad, ads and campaigns but i don't think it's a must okay like i said like i said there are ways to reach out to consumers in different ways and and more effective and efficient ways and you know that's the endeavor of the marketing teams uh, i'm pretty sure not just for us but across the industries where they want to make sure that you know they they reach uh, everyone in the most efficient manner so it's not a must per se having said that uh, having said that it's it's obviously it's a property where uh, it's easier to kind of reach to a larger mass uh, in one go right but but it comes with a downside of you know everyone wants to have that that share of that pie every advertiser every marketer so so it kind of gets difficult for it to to make sure that your brand stands out in a cluttered day. environment it's a clutter correct so you have to be like very very different for you to stand out in that segment yeah if you just give me an idea about the number of users that you currently have i what i read was 55 million i may be wrong what is the current uh, these number days, that... these days we talk about 7 crore plus registered players with us so. pardon These days we talk about seven crore plus. I think fifty five okay. was the full number. Okay. Are you looking to up your ad advertising sense this year? No. In fact, like I said, uh, what I'm looking to do is is to be more efficient. Efficient. Yes. More efficient and and uh, for that is if you know if I have to be present in more channels, I will be. Mm -hmm. uh, when I say efficient, I don't just mean from a. I mean reaching out the right mass. When I say mass, I mean I mean it has to be a substantial reach. with the right kind of impact on the brand of ns equity and everything right and of of course user acquisition yeah. uh, and hence and keeping profitable growth and sustainable growth in mind i think we got to we got to make sure that we become more and more efficient uh which would basically mean that you know we will 
to different innovative ways to kind of reach out hmm. to us. maybe it could be social media you know programs or, or campaigns also as well right in fact we did something uh, last quarter itself we said take a break challenge and we we basically you know got influencers to challenge other influencers and then uh, you know we got some entries from from users as well you know how do they take a break from any normal activity that they do yeah so so the idea is not to kind of just be do traditional marketing and that's important though it's important to to kind of uh, stay in the news like that but but equally important is how do you now use the various digital modes uh, the digital media in a way that that you know it's much more so important basically how much you can stretch the dollar or the rupee to basically finally you know looking ahead what can we expect from a23 what can what more can we expect from you yeah um, i think this the gaming industry online gaming industry has a lot of untapped potential yet yeah we see that growth year on year and i think we we obviously focusing on on getting a higher share of growth um but with with obviously ensuring that we give and deliver great customer experience personalization is, is one aspect of that right building trust overall building trust is is equally important uh understand and innovate more to leverage some of these consumer insights that we have to kind of you know grow the market as, as well as grow uh, our share and lastly of course you know continue to like i said continue to build on responsible gaming features because i think that's going to be extremely important if you want this industry to if you want this come uh yeah sector to kind of grow responsible gaming is always is going to be a very very strong narrative in which we want to basically you know make sure that we are the first ones and the pioneers to talk about that yeah thank you so much pinidi for your time it was lovely chatting with you thank you simran thank you so much 